Hello, my bookish friends. Welcome or welcome back. I'm Elizabeth. This is Reading Riley. And today we're going to talk about my most anticipated thriller, horror, feminist book releases coming out in the fourth quarter of 2024. That's October, November, and December. I make one of these videos every three months. So if this is the kind of content you are looking for, hit that subscribe button. I have just under 20 books to talk to you about today. There are fewer releases I feel like at the very end of the year, but most of these are in October. A lot of these are gonna be perfect for spooky season. And if you're as excited about that as I am, then stick around. <laughs> as usual, I will pop the title and the release date of the book up here as I'm talking about it so that you can take a screenshot if that's the easiest way for you to keep track of the books that you're interested in. And I will also tell you about these in order of release date starting in October and ending in December. If you're new here, hi, I'm Elizabeth. I like to read dark and speculative books. I'm obsessed with psychology and thinking about why people behave the way that they do and trying to get down to the root of it because it's just what drives me as a human being. I typically read thrillers, horror, feminist books. Before we get into the books, I do want to talk to you for a moment about Magic Mind. This is a mental performance shot, but it's not just that. It's a productivity shot. It's an immunity booster. It's a energy giving thing. It does a lot more than that. There are many reasons why I like this. You may have heard me talk about Magic Mind before. I'm a big fan and I love this brand's commitment to using only high quality clean ingredients. There are so many things in here that most people are looking for now. It's literally just like things that are good for your body that help your mind work. Mental clarity, motivation, less stress, more energy. This could be really helpful for you as it has been for me. Bacopa Manieri. Uh, this is good for enhancing mood, motivation, working memory, supporting sharper mental clarity and cognitive processing. And then on the website, they also have linked down here citations that you can check. These are studies from the National Library of Medicine. You can go in and look if you're interested at the more specific details of the studies. But I love that they just have all of this on their website readily available. They're like, okay, this backs up what I am asserting. Here you go. Organic lion's mane mushrooms that supports cognitive health and enhances memory and focus. Organic cordyceps mushrooms boost endurance and enhance immunity support. I need immunity support more than ever right now because I'm working with kids. I've been slacking lately and I got sick, so I learned my lesson. Vitamin D3 supports a cognitive performance and the immune system, and there's promising evidence that it combats depressive symptoms. Oh, that's cool. Vitamin C, organic matcha, turmeric, organic agave. I am able to offer to y'all just for this video, if you're watching this exact video, you can get 40% off. That link is going to be down below, code Riley40 for 40% off your subscription. And this is available for only the first 10 orders. So get in there, hit that link. And now let's go ahead and talk about these books, y'all. Let's do it. I have a ton of books in October, so we're going to be talking a lot about October. This first book that I want to talk to you about comes out on October 1st. This will be the second book in a series, the first of which was called The Plot, and this one is called The Sequel. So I'm honestly not sure if I should even give you the description of this. I'm afraid it might spoil the first book because I don't remember all of the details of that. Although I do know we are following a character in this book that we followed in the first book, but it's not the same protagonist. Antagonist. Much like the plot, it sounds like there is a secret that this author has and someone is threatening to out them. That sounds eerily similar to the first book, so I'm curious as to how that could be different. I do have an advanced ALC of this one from, I believe, Macmillan. And I started it, got maybe a few minutes into it, and wasn't connecting immediately. So this is one that I may come back to. The plot was nominated for Best Mystery Thriller for the Goodreads Choice Awards in 2021. I don't know what the second one's gonna do. It tends to be a little bit more on the literary side or the plot felt that way anyway. So this next one also comes out on October 1st. This is by Nita Prose. I think this is a novella called The Mistletoe Mystery. Yeah, 128 pages featuring Molly the Maid from her novel The Maid, which I think also has another sequel that I have not read yet. 
but I fell in love with this character of Molly the Maid because she's so clearly neurodivergent and I connected to her on this like cosmic level. This one sounded interesting to me. It says Molly the Maid has a whole new mystery to solve this holiday season when a secret Santa gift exchange raises questions about who she can and cannot trust. A heartwarming story about the true spirit of the season. So that might be fun if you're looking for like a holiday quick read. Again on October 1st we have, I'm gonna say this wrong, probably Coupe de Gras. I want to say just because it sounds fancy but maybe it's not at all maybe it's grasse maybe it's grace just coupe de grace I don't know by Sophia Ajram a mind-bending and visceral experimental horror about a young man trapped in an infinite Montreal subway station see this is what I'm saying I think this is where horror is going and horror is trending towards cosmic right now it says Mark Z Danielowski that's the author of House of Leaves that one's just kind of like this off the wall I have not read it <laughs> but from what I know about it it's just wild I own it. I've looked through it. I've tried, but it does not, it would not work on audio and I don't have the stamina for that. Maybe one day though. But anyway, I feel like this is interesting and fresh. Susanna Clark, is that Piranesi? I haven't read that one either. Vicken has a plan. Throw himself into the St. Lawrence River in Montreal and end it all for good believing it to be the only way out for him after a lifetime of depression and pain. But stepping off the subway, he finds himself in an endless looping station. Okay, I remember this one now. This sounds really good. Determined to find a way out again, he starts to explore the rooms and corridors ahead of him, but no matter how many claustrophobic hallways or vast cathedral-esque rooms he passes through, the exit is nowhere in sight. The more he explores this strange new prison, the more he becomes convinced that he hasn't been trapped there accidentally. And amongst the shadows and concrete, he comes to realize that he almost certainly is not alone. A terrifying psychological nightmare from a powerful new voice in horror. 144 pages. So this is like a, a novella as well. It looks like this is a Canadian author. Oh, it says it's queer, horror fiction, adult queer contemporary mystery in Canada. Yeah, that sounds really good. Again, on October 1st, we have Fang Fiction by Kate Stamen London. This is a romance novel, but it has a horror aesthetic, if you will. So this is something that I may like. Also, I have read another novel by this author, another romance novel, and that was One to Watch. And this one was about a plus-sized contestant on a reality TV dating show like The Bachelor. It made me feel so seen. And it was so good and I loved the writing. So I'm excited now to get to read Fang Fiction by Kate Stamen London. Tess Rosenblum is no stranger to the dark. An assault survivor in grad school dropout, she spends her nights managing a chic Brooklyn hotel and her days curled up with her favorite vampire novels, Blood Feud. Tess even dabbles in online conspiracies that Blood Feud is real. It's fun to hunt for clues, but deep down Tess doesn't believe vampires actually exist until one walks through her door. Okay, it turns out Blood Feud is real and the sexy villain of the novels is trapped. Eager to escape her life, Tess agrees to help rescue him. And soon she's in a fantasia of lavish palaces and enchanted forests on a secret island where the sun never shines and she's surrounded by deadly vampires. Wow, I don't think I've actually read this description yet. Is this a romance? <laughs> And against her better judgment, she's falling in love with one of them. There we go. Yes, it is. And unbeknownst to Tess, her estranged best friend is having a sapphic affair with a beautiful vampire of her own back in New York. Oh my goodness. Visiting of the world of your favorite story is any fan's dream, but will Tess be able to outrun the demons of her past and vampires of her present? Before it becomes a nightmare, in this darkly glamorous rom-com, Tess will find out whether it's worth risking her neck and her heart for a chance to reclaim her future. 400 pages. Kind of long, too. But that sounds like fun. That's something I might I might want to get into. Yet again, on October 1st, we have The Bog Wife by Kay Cronister. This is an atmospheric Appalachian Gothic. The Haddisley siblings of West Virginia must unearth long buried secrets to carve out a future when the supernatural bargain entwining their fate with their ancestral land is suddenly ruptured. Okay, that is a mouthful and a brainful what is happening. Since time immemorial, the Haddisley family has tended to the cranberry bog. In exchange, the bog sustains them. The staunch seasons of their lives are governed by a strict covenant that is renewed each generation with the ritual sacrifice of their patriarch. Oh, 
and in return the bog produces a bog wife. What? There's sacrificing men and we get a bog wife? Brought to life from vegetation, this woman is meant to carry on the family line. But when the bog fails or refuses to honor the bargain, the Haddlesleys, Haddlesleys, a group of discordant siblings still grieving the mother who mysteriously disappeared years earlier, face an unknown future. The description goes on and on. I don't want to give brimming with aching loss and the universal struggle between honoring family commitments and the drive to strike out on one's own. The bog wife is a haunting invocation of the arcane power of the habits and habitats that bind us. Interesting. 336 pages. Huh. Like it could be really good or it could be really bad. And I don't know this author, but I'm intrigued. Next, we're going to move on to another day. Finally, we have on October 8th, the new Jason Recolac. I read Hidden Pictures by this author and really enjoyed it. Some people had issues with the twist in that one. I didn't, but I am not part of that group. So don't look to me for answers on that. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that whole story, but I really liked the book. So I'm excited for this new one. It's called The Last One at the Wedding by Jason Recolac. A breathtaking work of suspense about a father trying to save his daughter from a life-altering decision that will put everything he loves on the line. Frank Satowski is shocked when his daughter Maggie calls him for the first time in three years. He was convinced that their estrangement would become permanent. He's even more surprised when she invites him to her upcoming wedding in New Hampshire. Frank is ecstatic and determined to finally make things right. He arrives to find that the wedding is at a private estate, very secluded, very luxurious, very much out of his league. Seems that Maggie failed to mention that she's marrying Aiden Gardner, the son of a famous tech billionaire. Feeling desperately out of place, Frank focuses on reconnecting with Maggie and getting to know her new family. But it's difficult. Aiden is withdrawn and evasive. Maggie doesn't seem to have time for him. And he finds that the locals are disturbingly hostile to the gardeners. Frank needs to know more about this family his daughter is marrying into. But if he pushes too hard, he could lose Maggie forever. Could be good. Edge of your seat thriller that delves deep into the heart of one family. The last one at the wedding is a work of brilliant suspense from a true modern master. Hmm. 352 pages and that comes out October 8th. On October 10th, we have a new Paula Hawkins. This is the author of Stranger on a Train, which I've still yet to read. In fact, I don't know that I've read any of Paula Hawkins books. The Girl on the Train, not Stranger on the Train. I've got quite a few of them on my TBR, but I've not read any of them. That's shameful. I'm sorry, Paula. Anyway, maybe we'll read this one and then we'll go from there. How's that sound? Paula Hawkins, The Blue Hour, the spellbinding new novel from the internationally best-selling author of The Girl on the Train. An isolated Scottish island, you know I love some isolation in my stories, accessible to the mainland only 12 hours a day, a famous, some might say infamous, artist whose notoriously unfaithful husband disappeared after visiting her 20 years ago. Okay, a present day discovery that intimately connects three people and unveils a web of secrets and lies. A masterful, it's not say, it's saying a lot without saying much, which makes me a little, you know. A masterful and propulsive novel that asks searing questions of ambition, power, gender, and perception. I like that. The Blue Hour recalls the very best of Shirley Jackson and Patricia Highsmith and cements Hawkins Place among the very best of our most nuanced, powerful, and stylish storytellers. Very cool. Thriller and mystery, 320 pages. And again, that comes out on October 10th. On October 11th, the next day, we have Last Night of Freedom by Dan Howarth. Don't know this author, but this one sounded good. So what is this about? Let's just read it. We'll find out together because I don't remember at all. On a stag party, okay, so it already sounds British, in a remote part of the Lake District, four old university friends are dragged into a bizarre local ritual. They expect a weekend of real ale, log fires, and gentle hikes, but a stag party of locals have other ideas. Unwillingly drawn into one-upmanship and animosity. Oh god, this is going to be frustrating. The four friends find themselves being hunted across unfamiliar ground in a game of deadly consequences. Oh, with, with only one of them guaranteed to survive, old wounds and resentments threaten to tear them apart as much as their pursuers. 
Can the four friends unite to fight back or will they fall divided and broken? 269 pages. That sounds really good actually. I love a game. It's giving Hunger Games but with like men and patriarchy. That one could be really good. On October 15th, I have Rest Stop. This is the newest coming out from author Nat Cassidy who is becoming one of my favorite authors. I loved both of the books that I've read from him, Mary and Awakening of Terror and Nestlings. So this is his new one and I think this one is maybe also a novella or a very short. Does say novella. Okay, 160 pages. So yes, novella. A young musician. Yes, this is following a musician, which I love following musicians as I have been one for many years in my life. A young musician finds himself locked inside a gas station bathroom okay, in the middle of the night, by an unseen assailant. Mm, sus. Caught between the horrors on the other side of the door and the horrors rapidly skittering down the walls inside. Oh, is this going to be like bug horror and like nasty? Uh, it's going to be gross. It's going to be really gross. I can't wait. October 15th. That's all it says. That's the entire, it's a short stories, horror, novella, adult, fiction, contemporary. As of now, it's got 37 ratings with a 4.68, which is, you know, it's very few ratings, but that's a high rating nonetheless. So yeah, I'm really excited for that one. October 15th, that one I might read like when, it, I might pre-order that one right now actually. Pre-orders available on Amazon for 12.99, which is not bad. Okay, that's done. Once again, on October 15th, we have American Rapture. This is by CJ Lead. Have I read anything by CJ Lead? That's the question. Oh yeah, she did Maeve Fly. I haven't read it yet and I own it. I need to read it. Oh, that's right. Okay. American Rapture, a virus is spreading across America, transforming the infected and making them feral with lust. Sophie, a good Catholic girl, must traverse the hellscape of the Midwest. That's right, I am a Midwest girl. I grew up in the Midwest. To try to find her family while the world around her burns. Along the way, she discovers there are far worse fates than dying a virgin. Oh, this does say it has some science fiction element in here. So I'm more intrigued by that. 384 pages. It says adult horror. Uh, science fiction, thriller, religion, dystopia. Okay. Pharaoh with lust. So the virus is making them give in to their carnal wants and needs probably. Oh, that one could be fun. Next on October 22nd, we have It Will Only Hurt For A Moment by Delilah S. Dawson. Again, this is an author that I haven't read from yet, but I'm wanting to. I've got my eye on her. I'm intrigued. What else did this author write? That's right, the violence. Wait a minute, I really liked the violence. It was long and a slow burn, but so good and super feminist. Oh, snap. Okay, renewed hope. Let's go back. A young woman hopes to reinvent herself at an isolated artist's colony only to be drawn into its dark, twisted past. Sarah Carpenter is starting over. She's on the run, leaving behind her unsupportive, narcissistic ex-boyfriend, an alcoholic, abusive mother, and headed for a new beginning at Tranquil Falls. This colony is on the grounds of a closed hotel. There, with no cell signal or internet to distract her, she hopes to rediscover her love for pottery and put the broken pieces of her life back together. But when Sarah uncovers the body of a young woman while digging a hole for a pit kiln, things start to fall apart. Her fellow artists begin to act in troubling ways, and the eccentric fiber artist knits an endless scarf. The musician plays the same carousel song over and over until his fingers bleed. Okay. The calligrapher grins with ink-stained teeth. Oh. Not to mention the haunting dreams Sarah has night after night. When she discovers glass shards in her clay, Sarah wonders if someone is out to get her or if she's losing her grip on reality out here in the wilds where the pounding of the waterfall never ever fades as she investigates the beautiful valley and the crumbling resort looming over all. She unearths a chilling past that refuses to remain buried. This is 368 pages. It says horror, thriller, adult fiction, mystery. 
Halloween. Okay. Again, on October 22nd, we have Absolution. This is by Jeff Vandermeer, and it is book four in the Southern Reach series. The first of which is Annihilation, which I only recently read. I've not moved on in the series yet. But from my understanding, this was only supposed to be a three book trilogy. And now years after the third book was published, this book number four is coming out. So now I'm interested. For Jeff Vandermeer, there was never full closure to the story of Area X. There were a few mysteries that had gone unsolved. Some key points of view never aired. I don't want to give anything away, so I'm going to stop reading there. But if you've not read Annihilation or if you're unfamiliar with it, Area X is what they're calling this place. And people that go there, their memories get all joggled up or they just die. They never return. They've been sending scientists and people that are at like the top of their fields for years now with really no more information to move forward with. And we're following a main protagonist in Annihilation who is about to go in as the next group. She is familiar but not because her husband was one of the people who went in in the, the previous group. And they came back, but not the same. And she's going in because she needs answers. There's a lot of like body horror in here. There's a lot of weird stuff about like nature. And it's disgusting and beautiful at the same time, if it's at all possible, um, Annihilation is. But it's also so confusing. So anyway, there's book number four coming out if you're interested. All right, next I have another sequel, and this is also coming out on October 22nd, and it is The Watchers number two by A.M. Shine. This is called Stay in the Light. Now, I'm not going to go into the description on this one because I do know that at least the protagonist spoils a little bit of The Watchers. I will skip the description, but it does say this is a chilling modern twist on the gothic horror novel. And it's perfect for fans of Keelan Patrick Burke, who I really enjoy, and T. Kingfisher, who I enjoy, and classic horror is horror fiction. It's 320 pages. There was recently a movie adaptation for The Watchers. I thought it was directed by M. Night Shyamalan, but I don't think, I think I was wrong. I think it was actually his daughter that directed it, which is cool, awesome. I watched it, I loved it, I read the book. I really liked it. I thought it was a really unique, original horror. And The Watchers were following Mina, and she is in this like forest trying to deliver a bird. What was the bird's name? I remember it, oh gosh. I think she just calls it the yellow one for the whole book, but it's the bird. She gets to this specific part in the forest and her car breaks down. Everyone's car breaks down when they get to that specific part in the forest. It's like a phenomenon that just happens. She gets out, she's got her little bird. She's trying to find this house where she's supposed to be delivering this. And then some stuff happens in the woods. There's a woman, she's yelling, screaming at her, come, 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 or I'm closing the door. You have five, four, three. And so she scoops in. Now she is part of the thing. The watchers come out at night to watch these people that they have caught in this building. And as you read the story, you kind of learn more about where they came from. What is this building? Why are the people here? All of that. The watchers was trying to figure out what this thing was, learning about it, doing almost like this like science experiment to figure out like what are the watchers. The second book, what is this called? Stay in the light. Oh, <laughs> and that's scary too because they can't come out in the light. That's the thing. They can only come out in the dark. And I think this is going to be more about the implications on the world after, you know, this knowledge comes out about them. So I am really excited for this one. This should, should be good. At, yeah, and again, that comes out on October 22nd. All right, moving on to November. Um, November 11th, we have The Threshing Floor by Steph Nelson. And I can't, oh, this is a culty book. That's why it intrigued me. Again, I'm not familiar with this author. At least I sounds kind of familiar, but I don't recall having read anything by them. She'll do anything to save her child, even join a cult. When single mom Dallas learns her toddler Cash needs a heart transplant, she gets desperate. There are no guarantees that he'll receive a donor heart in time, and even if he does, she can't afford the expensive procedure. Then Dallas meets Shane. He's part of a mysterious group whose leader claims to be able to heal any disease or injury. Dallas is skeptical at first, and the ritual she witnesses makes her uneasy. But when a broken arm gets healed before her eyes, she can't deny the truth. And she wants the same miracle for cash. 
Dallas must decide how far she's willing to go to save him because the miracles in the secret group come at a steep price, a price that might be too high for even the most devoted mother. <laughs> that is a cult thriller. Again, that comes out on November 11th. The next day on November 12th, we have a new Eliza Clark called She's Always Hungry, and this is a short story anthology. Yes, that's the word, anthology. That, that word is always elusive to me. So yeah, this is the author of both Penance and Boy Parts, neither of which I have read yet, but so many of my friends who have similar reading tastes to me have enjoyed this. A teenager longs for perfect skin, as do all teenagers, and all people probably in general. A scientist tends to fragile alien flora. Maybe this is when I figure out the difference between flora and fauna. Flora just has a flower, is that it? Each of these characters has a desperate desire. Can any of them be sated? Unsettling, revelatory, and laced with her signature dark humor. Ooh, I didn't know that. I love some dark humor. Eliza Clark's debut short story collection plums the depths of that most basic human feeling, hunger. Hmm, okay. Are we gonna get cannibalism in here? She's always hungry. Please let there be a cannibalism story. It's 240 pages and that comes out November 12th. We are on to December and I have three in December. The first one, it comes out on December 10th. It's called What the Woods Took. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a YA novel, which is not typical for me, but it sounded really good. So I wanted to add it anyway. I couldn't turn this down because of the first sentence on the description, Yellow Jackets meets Girl Interrupted. Done, sold, no need to go on. I am sold on that, but I will go on because I forgot anything that this is about, and you're probably curious now. When a group of troubled teens in a wilderness therapy program find themselves stranded in a forest full of monsters eager to take their place. Okay, what? Okay, what? Oh gosh. Devin Green wakes in the middle of the night to find two men in her bedroom. No stranger to a fight, she calls her foster parents for help, but it soon becomes clear that this is a planned abduction. They're probably taking her to some kind of correctional, not correctional facility, but you know what I mean. She's shoved into a van and driven deep into the Idaho woods where she's dropped off with a cohort of equally confused teens. Finally, two camp counselors inform them that they've all been enrolled in an experimental therapy program. If the campers can learn to change their self-destructive ways and survive a 50 days hike through the wilderness, they'll come out the other side as better versions of themselves, or so the counselors say. What the Woods Took is a poignant story of transformation that explores the price of becoming someone or something new. Horror, young adult, thriller, LGBTQ. Nice. 336 pages. Next on December 10th, we have What the Wife Knew. This is the new Darby Kane. She wrote Pretty Little Wife, and that was the one that I read. So this, again, is a domestic thriller about a wife wandering who tried to kill her husband twice before finally succeeding. Oh, because that was supposed to be her job. Oh, okay, now this is kind of giving parallel themes to actually Pretty Little Wife. So that's interesting off the bat. Dr. Richmond Doherty is a renowned pediatric surgeon, an infamous tragedy survivor, and a national hero. He's also very dead. Thanks to a fall down the stairs, his neighbors angrily point a finger at the newest Miss Doherty, Addison. A sudden marriage to the mysterious young woman only lasted 97 days, and he'd had two suspicious accidents during that time. Now Addison is a very rich widow. The next Mrs. Parrish energy, perhaps? As law enforcement starts to circle in on Addison and people in town become increasingly hostile, sides are chosen with Catherine, Richmond's high school sweetheart, wife number one, and the mother of his children leading the fray. Despite rising tensions, Addison is even more driven to forge ahead on the path she charted years ago. Determined at all costs to unravel Richmond's legacy, she soon becomes a target with a shocking note left on her bedroom, you will pay left on her bedroom. What does that mean? Her plan to marry Richmond then ruin him may have been derailed by his unexpected death, but she's not done with him yet. How many pages? 368. Okay, so a little longer. We'll see. Maybe I'll listen, wait for reviews on that one. But again, that's coming out December 10th. 
So last one I'm kind of confused by. I think maybe overseas this already came out and then it's being released in December in the States uh, because there was some confusion there. So check if you're not in the States, this may already be available to you. And this is called Private Rights by Julia Armfield. Again, she wrote Our Wives Under the Sea, which I really loved. I thought it was beautiful. It was horrific. And it had this like sense of monstrousness, this sense of otherness, um, and beautiful prose. So this is meant to be a speculative reimagining of King Lear, centering on three sisters navigating queer love and loss in a drowning world. Wow. Sounds, how many pages is this? That sounds like a lot. 304 pages. That's pretty good. Right in the sweet spot for me. It's been raining for a long time now. So long that the land has reshaped itself and arcane rituals and religions are creeping back into practice. Sisters Isla, or is it Isla? Isla, Isla, Irene, and Agnes have not spoken in some time when their father dies. An architect as cruel as he was revered, his death offers an opportunity for the sisters to come together in a new way. In the grand glass house they grew up in, their father's most famous creation, the sisters sort through the secrets and memories he left behind until their fragile bond is shattered by a revelation in his will. Mm. More strange than ever, the sisters' lives spin out of control. Eileen's relationship is straining at the seams, Isla's ex-wife keeps calling, and cynical Agnes is falling in love for the first time. But something even more sinister might be unfolding, something related to their mother's long-ago disappearance and the strangers who have always seemed unusually interested in their sisters' lives. Soon it becomes clear that the sisters have been chosen for a very particular purpose, one with shattering implications for their family and their imperiled world. Wow. So again, this is horror fiction, queer fiction, literary fiction, 304 pages, and it says it was first published in June, June 11th of 2024. But again, I don't think, I can't find it here now. So I think that is again coming out on December 23rd. Looking forward to that one, and that's it. Those are the 17 or 18 books that I'm looking forward to in the upcoming quarter, fourth quarter of 2024. Thank you so much for hanging out with me, for joining me. Let me know if there are any books down below that I missed. Please, if there's something that, that's coming out that you just happen to know about, let me know in the, in the comments so that I can look that up too, because I don't want to miss out either. If you liked this video, hit the like button, subscribe. It really helps me with the algorithm. And stick around for the next Q1 of 2025 anticipated releases, which will probably come out in December. Also, don't forget, if you're interested in Magic Mind, then check out my link just below here. Riley 40. Again, the first 10 people to use that for the subscription will get 40% off. I love this product. I think you will too for productivity, for just mental health in general and immunity because, you know, we all need it these days. So y'all, that's going to be it. I'm signing out. I will see you again soon. Don't forget that life is very short, my love. So read Riley. Cheers and goodbye.